Summary of chapter one. The limit as x approaches c of a function, f of x, is what a function approaches from both sides. Make sure you're very careful. It's what approaches from both sides. Also, this is the technical way of saying it. The negative, the limit from the negative side or the left side is equal to the limit from the right side. This is your technical way of writing it. This is the wordy way, technical way. Left side is negative side, right side is positive side. So that is very important for the definition of a limit. So we're going to use and, and think about this graph and find some limits. So for these ones right here, we find the limit as it approaches 1. So as it approaches 1 is right here. So from the, val the limit as it approaches 1 does not exist because the left and the right limits do not agree. As you can tell, the, right, the left limit, the negative side, this graph approaches 2. From the positive side, this graph approaches negative 1. So these two values do not agree, so it does not exist. The value f of 1 is negative 1. Be very careful of that. The value of f of 1 is negative 1 because that is the closed circle. So the limits must agree to on either side for the limit to be existing. So we're looking now at the limit of 3. As x approaches 3, so as x approaches 3, the limit does exist because it's 3. Because both the graph from both sides approaches negative 3. I wrote that down wrong, correct? So as we approach from both sides, this should be a negative 3. So the limit approaches here, isn't that also a negative 3 and a negative 3? So it is a negative 3 as you approach from both sides. It's negative 3 from the left or the negative side. From the positive side, it's negative 3. And so since these two are negative 3, the answer exists. The limit does exist. But what is the value at 3? Be very careful. The value at 3 is 1. The value at 3 is 1. That is the value, the closed dot. you got to watch out for those kind of things. A lot of people say that is the limit. No, that is not the limit. The limit is what you're approaching from both sides due to this definition right on top. Lastly, the limit as you approach 5, at x approaches 5. So x is 5 is an asymptote. It does not exist because from the left, the negative side, aren't you going to positive infinity? From the positive side, aren't you going to negative infinity? These two do not agree, so this is, does not exist. Now, if these two both went to positive infinity, this would be in positive infinity. If these both went to negative infinity, this would be negative infinity. But since they go opposites, it does not exist. What is the value at 5? It's an asymptote. There is no value. It does not exist. So know how to find values at points. Know how to do left and right limits. Know that the limit, these two have to agree. This is just a nice way of showing a lot of details about limits, pictorially. So it shows a lot of the places where limits do not exist and so forth. Now, how do we find a limit numerically or graphically? These are these type of problems where we have to use numerically or graphically to find the limit because we cannot use the analytical method. So basically, with these, I usually do numeric because without a graphing calculator, you can't really do graphical unless you know what it looks like. So these are both probably for you going to be numeric, meaning a table. You make a table, you crunch it from both sides, see what you're getting. You just got to make a table. If you have a graphing calculator, look at your graph real quick and easy. You can see what you're approaching. But these ones will both have issues. This one will be an asymptote. This one will be a break. You've seen it in your homework. This will be a break coming at the same two different values from each side. This will be an asymptote. Now, for analytically, and analytically are the methods of dividing out, rationalizing, and the special trig properties. Those are your analytical methods. Oh, wait, the easiest one is plug it in. Sorry, 
That is also one. Plug it in, you're done. <laughs> that's the like bonehead, like that's way too easy one. Um, just plug it in. But dividing out means you're going to factor and cancel. Rationalizing means you multiply top and bottom on this one by the square root x minus 3. And these are just the simple trig functions. For this one, you multiply top and bottom by 7. It's the trig function one. And this one's just ready to go. The answer is 0. So be aware, these are all the analytical methods. These are, you can't use the analytical method, so you're probably going to do numeric or the table crunch. Okay. There are others than these. These are just some of the basic ones, most obvious. The next part we ran into is how do you find a vertical asymptote? To find a vertical asymptote, the first step is actually, and I didn't write it here, is to set the bottom equal to zero. Set the h of x equal to zero. So h is the bottom. So you just basically set the bottom equal to zero. Once you do that and solve it, those values where you set the bottom equal to zero, if when you plug them back in and you get a non-zero over zero, if you plug those values in and get a non-zero over zero, those are vertical asymptotes. So again, you first set the bottom equal to zero. The top, you just don't worry about. And then when you whatever values you solve for, you plug them in. Again, if you get a, neg a number over zero, it is a vertical asymptote. If you get zero over zero, it's probably a hole called a removable discontinuity. And the last one, finding discontinuities. We just said the word. You set denominator equal to zero and solve. That is where your discontinuities will be. You can have different types, asymptotes, holes, breaks. But that's how you find discontinuities. Again, a removable discontinuity is a hole. It's this type, where you cancel out. These two will be holes. So this, and I think all these are holes. Because analytical method actually finds the holes. Usually, if, there, if it's not a hole, if it's a vertical asymptote, you usually have to use this method, if that makes sense. You have to do this kind of thing um, for a vertical asymptote so right here. So hopefully this is a broad overview of chapter one limits.